Hey everyone, Wanabot here, and welcome to For the King 2. Out in, I, I don't think I'm going to call it early access, but the way For the King works, it's always kind of a, a short development period followed by a bunch of expansion DLC to just add more and more to the game. Uh, and if you've played the previous one, it's going to be pretty similar mechanically. Main difference is there's a fourth player. Uh, there's a lot more items and equipment and customization that you can do, and then also more meta progression and so on and so forth. Uh, the fact that it's four players, for me, is kind of cool. I almost kind of wish it was scalable, so you could do one, two, three, or four, uh, depending on the kind of adventure you want to have. Like, if you could even multi-class with one character, then maybe. Anyway, uh, so plot for this one is that the queen has gone mad and has become a tyrant in the uh, events after For the King 1. The king was assassinated, I believe, by, like, an evil wizard, and the queen more or less sent you off to... to take the evil wizard out. And I think I even remember joking like, I'm sure the queen's gonna off us by the end of the, the game and just take power. And I was right and she did and now we're forming the resistance to take her out. Uh, oh, also the campaign is split into kind of more sub-adventures instead. So instead of just being like one long adventure, it's now a bunch of kind of smaller ones with her own specific story and, and plot. So, my, we haven't seen many adventures in these parts for a spell. Hard to believe it's been 20 years since the Chaos Wars, ain't it? I almost missed that little scoundrel, Vexor. He was right. He was a right delight next to me. Oh, next to what we're dealing with these th days. Heavens me. I'd take a wee bit of thunder and lightning any time over this. Yes, I would. She whispers. In case you haven't heard, all's not well in Farul. The good queen, Rosamon, has lost her bleeding mind. Now as simple folk live in terror, we do. What has happened to our once lovely queen? Look, if you want to help, meet me in Pran and I'll tell you all I know. Won't take, a, take long, I wager. Keep your peepers on the timer above. It runs out. We're done for. Okay. So now it's just free to go and do whatever I want. So we don't need to see the tutorial. I have already played all of this stuff, but I don't think I can turn him off. Let me actually check that real quick because he's getting on my nerves. Uh, let's see. Enable tutorials. Oh, there he's, he's gone. Wow, we actually have a lot here, including an arachnophobia mode. Nice. Uh, and then I guess I might as well preemptively turn the sound effects down just by a smidge. Uh, so, by the way, I'm... I might as well mention that I'm going to be playing this solo, at least for now, but I will probably do a multiplayer series later on. Uh, judging by the Steam reviews, there's some bugs that are uh, dragging the game down a little bit. I think that'll bring my allies in. Do we want to fight the witch? Do we want to fight the trickster? I don't know. Let's go fight the, the witch first. I turned the tutorials off. All right. Did I not? I have no idea. Well, we cannot ambush. I don't actually know what happens when you fail to ambush, so we're just going to fight her. I don't know if she brings any allies in, or if it's just her. Probably best if it's just her for now. Ye gods, go away. Oh my god, there's so much. I'm going to check the settings again. Gameplay, tutorials. Save. Oh, maybe it's because I switched tabs? Maybe that's it. Okay. So, the way the game works, if you haven't seen it before, is each of your characters kind of has different special uh, specialities and abilities. So in this case, we're starting with a stable hand. Basic dude, can't do too much. We have interrupt, push, which I think dazes an enemy, which is actually kind of good. Because uh, it makes it so they can't move. It's better against a melee enemy. The young witch is, I believe, ranged, so it's not that big of a deal. Forget what interrupt does. Well, in that case, let's interrupt her. Because I think what that does is it pushes her to the back of the initiative order. Yes, I was correct. Okay, so now we switch to our scholar who has a book, a uh, magic book. Can do 3 day damage and, oh, I should probably mention the per slot accuracy. So, in this case, it's going to roll 3 die. Uh, each has a 83% chance of landing on, on a success. Uh... Let's see, and it doesn't look like it's an area. So in this case, each one hits, therefore does full damage. Uh, and if you roll less than that, you do slightly less. But she's got a cure, but I think cure is remove status effects, not heal. This game is kind of stingy with the healing. So in that case, we only do two damage instead of the uh, four that I would like. So who do we give money to? Uh, I'm going to have the stable hand do it because they're the last in the turn order. We want them to be as wealthy as possible. And give our blacksmith armor. Because he's going to be our tank.
And what else do I have to say about this? We kind of want to set ourselves up so we can specifically fight this goblin. So I might actually just have this guy walk straight back to the inn. Uh, and take a look at the quest board. So we have... Kill the boner in the autumn forest. That gets us... Oh, a merchant hat. Gold multiplier, EXP multiplier, movement in fine distance. That's actually really good. And then everything else just seems to be gold. Uh, I think I'm actually going to go for the... The green jelly. Oh, that's not even far away. So we'll have to make our, our way over to that, though. I don't think we can do anything else here, so let's just end turn. Alright, herbalist. And good thing we actually moved the blacksmith back. Because we have the goblin trickster, but we also have a young witch camp. Uh, so I think if we do the goblin trickster, it'll be alone. Then we can fight the... Then we can fight the camp. Because what I want to do is maybe get to the point where I can actually level up. Decent chance of ambushing the Goblin Trickster. Oh. But we're out of range. So it's just uh, the Scholar and the Herbalist here. That's slightly unfortunate because the Goblin Trickster is actually resistant against magic. And that's not armor. This is just... Oh boy. Well. I mean, we'll kill him. At least it's magic against magic. Ouch. Might just... No, we're not going to take it out. Yeah, so the, the shields are just a flat damage bonus. <laughs> this is kind of pathetic, to be honest. But that's okay. Because we got out of that pretty clean. Uh, let's see. We'll give it to the Scholar. And... Herbalist can take the bomb. I can remember to use those. So because the Herbalist and the... Oh. And she doesn't have any more movement. Okay, good to know. Because the Herbalist and the Scholar both have, I think, ranged weapons, they ha count as one further. Okay, so if, if I do this, it looks like it's going to pull the tile. Yes. So we can actually inspect and see how many units are going to show up. Uh, do we? I suppose I might as well. Unless... Is this a building that I can do anything with? No, it is not. Yeah, let's fight this. Full team. It's going to be a 4v4, which is going to be a little dicier, but... It's all witches. All right. Well, okay, witches and a bat, but whatever. I'll work with it. Okay, so interrupt, push. The bat's already attacked. What if I push the bat? Nope. Did not succeed. That's okay, we have an area blast. Which is functionally not worth doing. I'm gonna try and kill this bat. Oh, it does do some damage. Yeah, unfortunately, the witches in the Sea Hag have magic resistance. Oh, I shouldn't have them next to each other. Oh, this is costly. All right. Now we have Bash, and we do have a stun. And we also have Taunts. And he doesn't have much for magic resistance, so honestly, probably better to just go for the damage. Who do we kill? I'll just work on this one. Oh right, the grid-based, like the tile placements, is completely new. I'd forgotten about that. Okay, so let's move over one. Interrupt. This one. I mean, mostly we just want to go for the kill if we can. Could not. Alright, do we go for the area blast or do I just do I just blast and hope for the best? Yeah, they blocked it. Yeah, unfortunately they're gonna keep hitting me with AoEs here, and that's gonna hurt us 
a lot, actually. Uh, can I stun? Yes. I forget. Is it shift click? Or is it middle click? There we go, right click. Okay, 90, 93% chance of success here. Stun the sea hag so she just can't do anything. Alright, that gives me some time to do whatever. Uh, let's see. Do I actually want my stable hand to move? No. Oh, we do also have a defense... Oh, we know, that just means anybody behind can't be targeted except for by ranged attacks. Uh, interrupt. Interrupt the young witch. Push her back. Uh, didn't succeed. Did damage. Didn't succeed at anything more than that, though. <sighs> At least the damage isn't that bad. Not my favorite round, but we are going to heal. I mean, do we want to just... stun her again? You don't get a turn. I mean, she will eventually. Hey, and she's gone. Okay, so we're gonna... We're gonna have our scholar move over. Right. Do we stun her again or do we just go for the crunch? We're not gonna kill her, unfortunately. Getting close. At least that won't do too much damage to my herbalist. Yep. And this is why I wanted to move them. Uh, separate them out a little bit. So, it's fine. Could be better. But, not bad. And we get to buy some gear. Uh, get some resistance for a character. Frankly, I'll put him on the Scholar. Ooh, and we have a treasure chest. And because it's me controlling everything, I can just allocate gold to the character that needs it. Playing multiplayer is uh, a little goofy. Okay, movement bonus. Give it to the herbalist. Goblin wraps. Resistance, evasion, movement bonus, and speed. You know, honestly, I think I'm going to put that on the blacksmith. Alright. So we've taken some damage. How close are we to a level? Pretty far, which means the scholar is kind of not in the best spot. And we want to get down here and head for that green jelly. So I guess I'm going to bring them back. This is going to take a little while. Get a vision scroll. Okay, so the other thing we can do is actually go to Ash Haven. Because, well, I mean, we're already here. Pipe increase in movement points when used with any herb in the overworld. You used to have to upgrade your pipe at every town to increase your healing, but now God's Beard... I don't actually know what causes God's Beard to scale. Uh, but mostly what I'm looking for is useful equipment that I can pass to other characters. Or use on this one. So, looking at the stable hands, their strength and their speed are kind of their best stats. Uh, so the Queen Sword is not terrible. It also only rolls two dice. And it gets Cutting Slice, which is damage, single target, and bleed. And then there's Stab, which is ignores armor. That's pretty good. Crude Hammer, Book of Ice. Is incredibly good if I want to give that to one of my casters. Um, so it makes you immune to ice, does decent amount of damage, and does do uh, a group. And if I remember right, Freeze is amazing. What else do we have? Armor, attack damage, and regen. How much? I have 36. So the Queen's Bowman Gloves are also really good. 28, 20, mmm. And we don't have that much gold between us. I do have the Wooden Sword. I can sell it for one. Not amazing. Oh, here we go.
Now, I could sell stuff that I've picked up. So we have the crude goblin bomb. Oh, too far away. And I could sell the lockpicks, but no, not really worth it. So the question is, what do we want to grab? Because the bowman gloves are kind of nice. Uh, to potentially give to, or even equip, onto my stable hand for the time being. I think I'll go for that rather than a weapon. Uh, namely because that gives us a little bit of HP regen. Th though is that per turn in combat, or is that per turn on the overworld? I don't actually know, and I'm pretty sure it's not the one I'm hoping for. Alright, whatever. I think uh, this is good enough. Surfaces, we could actually, like, rest it in, replenish the HP and focus. I think I might want to do that on the Scholar. Stable hand's kind of okay. Let me have the Merc Guild if I want to. Uh, I think I'm just going to have my Stable Hand go over here. Pipesmith. Okay. So the pipes are a little ex too expensive for me. I could make a little bit more money if I wanted them. So EXP when using an herb, extra healing when using an herb, focus when using an herb, or movement points. And then also they sell stuff like God's Beard. Which, I think I'm just going to buy the God's Beard. Hopefully, hopefully the Pipesmith is just going to stick around. Do we fight the Trickster? We're a little injured. If I fight the Trickster, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. I think I'll just end turn. We'll have other characters. In the vicinity. And if I observe the... Okay. Yeah, the green green jelly can and will... Or it's a group fight. So we don't... We don't want to do anything risky. Yeah, let's just get the group over. I might just use a God's Beard on the Herbalist. Or not the Herbalist, the Scholar. Oh. Well, it's all of us versus this dude. So, sure? Bye? I don't know what his expectation was, ambushing the whole freaking party all at once, but here he is. Okay, so we actually want to punt, uh, push this guy. Damn it. And he completely screws it up. Hell yeah. Well, that was a nice easy fight. Uh, continue to just put gold onto the stable hand. I don't know if they're just going to be our, our merchant for now. Maybe I could do that with the herbalist. It also depends on who I put the hat on. So we have a snake camp. But we'd be down a uh, party member, because unfortunately the Pipesmith does not have the range. Let's just go here, or not Pipesmith, our uh, stable hand doesn't have the range. Do we want to use a God's Beard? I think so. In retrospect, I think that Herbalist has a party heal, so that might have been better. Uh, so let's start with, the, start with the Trickster, just fight it. Looks like it's a, a 2v2, or a 4v2. I like those odds. Okay, so we have interrupt and push. Um, I don't actually know who's more dangerous here. So I'm going to go for the trickster. Let's see if I can just finish it off. Yup. I love how even the enemies will, like, l turn to look at their ally who just got drubbed. Do you want to just roll for the stun? Ugh. No dice. It's worth a shot. And not that much damage. We're good. Yeah. 
What the hat, though? Which unfortunately is not as good of a hat as I thought it would be. I think the 10% extra gold is going to be good. There we go. That was a series of whiffs. Alright, take the gold. Another bomb. Re uh, resistance, evasion, focus, intelligence, and speed. Yeah, I'll put it on the scholar. <laughs> that makes him look goofy. I love the fact that equipment shows up on your character models. It, that's always a sign of a fun RPG for me. Maybe not a, an amazingly good one always, but I don't know, it's just more fun for me. Being able to dress my characters up in weird ways. Alright. Oh, do we want to try ambushing? Not really. Our herbalist is good at ambushes. I think. Okay. Oh. Didn't get the push. Let's move over. And do we want to do a taunt? I think so. I don't know what kind of damage the green jellies do. Okay, move him over. We're gonna do an area blast. Oh, come on. Okay, I'll kill this one. I'm worried about that infinite. Ooh. Okay, so we need to untether our characters, like, ASAP. My scholar is not doing hot. Uh, let's see. If I use a God's beer, wait, no, no, this is our this is our stable. Come on! All right, push this one. Damn it! No, you're just gonna God's beard. Because otherwise, you're going to die. We need to kill one of these. Okay, move the scholar before he gets absolutely demolished. Oh. I figured since the green jelly was, you know, a level one, this wouldn't be too bad. I was wrong. I was blissfully incorrect. Are they hitting for 15? Okay, but they're splitting. Rip. 13 damage. That is unacceptable. Okay, so who's this? This is the blacksmith. I think we have to kill this one. I have no idea what that costs. Oh, that just cost me lives. Okay, and I know we get those back. Please, for the love of everything. I'm not, I don't have more focus? Oh! Because we just... Are you kidding me? My accuracy is dog shit, and it sucks. Like, in an 80%, and, I mean, I guess we're destined to fail a couple. Oh, there he goes. Next. Oh, good dodge. You know, honestly... Oh, no, we can actually do both. I'm just... I am gonna stun one of them. STUN IMMUNITY! Uh, 
I am having a day. Are we just gonna burn like half? Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, good. Almost killed him. Oh god, we are gonna have to go to the inn. Just don't beef it. Ye gods. I don't think I've ever done this badly in For the King. Then again, this is kind of one of those, like, I don't want to say hubris moments. Like, unless it attacks the Stable Hand or the Herbalist. Oh, it is going for the Stable Hand, who can survive at least one hit from it. And only that. It's got 19 HP. If we just hit this sucker... Oh, my stats have been reduced. That explains a lot. Because poisoned. Oh. Okay. That was an unmitigated disaster, but... Let's see. Let's share that. A Panax. Give it to him. Her. Everybody gets one, I suppose. And then we also have a chest. Okay, good. And we've shared shared the gold around. So now we can afford resting. Uh, strength ring. Not that helpful. Pickpocket shoes. Armor evasion, awareness, and speed. Chaos Storm and Support Range. Wild Staff, Max Damage, Target Group, Chaos Effects. I don't know if it's better, but the Walking Stick isn't that amazing. So we'll find out if it's good. And... Gold, EXP, Movement, and Fine Distance. Yeah, I'll give it to them. And then... I think we are going to camp. Eight turns used by any character to regain HP or focus. Okay. Uh, they're still poisoned. Let's see. Do we have her do anything? I mean, there's no reason not to. Yeah, we're just gonna have everybody rest, and we'll probably have the Scholar and the Stable Hand... Oh, we know, resting actually gets us some stats back. So do we want to fight the Garter Snake? We have a pair of camps here. My characters are about to level. The problem is poison is rough. Eh, sure, whatever. What's the worst that could happen, right? Get absolutely wrecked by snakes. I got a 50%. Nope, failure. Unfortunately, I think that means I get ambushed. Oh, only by one. Okay, that could have gone way, 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 way worse. So there's a bunch of garter snakes. Chaos Storm. Let's find out what this does. Nothing. It does nothing. That kind of roll. Okay, interrupt and push. Oh, Who damage? Ouch. At least I think so the, the snakes just hurt us. We'll just go camping immediately after this. <laughs> oh, we've been entangled. I think that just means we can't move. We're already poisoned, so this doesn't matter. Let's move him over. Okay, do a bash. Kill the snake, maybe? Chaos Storm. Again. Music. Dang it.
Uh, equip weapon. Oh. Can't do anything because Entangled. Boy, Entangled is rude. At least that does some damage to the snake. And the snakes don't threaten me that bad. Which is good. Oh, Entangled also means that they can't defend. A poor scholar. Well, I don't know. Make it work. Or not. Or yes. I want to see Chaos Storm. Go! Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do here, man? All right. Nah, it ain't worth it. No, I was hoping it would do just enough. Oh, of course, it wouldn't do enough splash damage. Oh, I'm gonna be paying for this. interesting that the uh, stable hand doesn't block for the scholar here. Maybe you need a shield. I figure if we're going to be resting again, I guess we can have him meditate. This is meaningless. Yeah, so I'll probably go back to the old, old weapon. I love the idea of Chaos Storm, whatever it does. But I simply don't know, can't necessarily find out. Oh, so you can still attack ranged from an entangle. Good to know. The last time I played this, I was just the scholar. And had no useful information on that. But she's not even poison. <laughs> it's so bad. Uh this game needs the uh, Baldur's Gate 3 dice waiting system. Maybe. Maybe not. Okay. Also got a treasure chest. A hunting rang. Throw, row attack, speed. Humorously enough. The uh, Scholar is our boomerang man. Okay, magic damage, crit chance, and EXP multiplier. Reduce luck, curse immunity. An armor. Ooh. Gonna put that on the stable hand. There we go. That actually was kind of lucrative. Land boats are a great way to travel the Seven Hills. Land, land boats? Okay, well, noble stable hand rest again. Okay, our blacksmith is out of focus. Otherwise good to go. I could go for the crow. No, we're just gonna meditate, get focus back. Yeah, the problem is the scholar. And we're just having all sorts of things pop up here. I know, unfortunately, we've got a, a bit of a timer that we have to worry about. But I think that's not the end. It just says hurry. Okay. Well, fight the snake. I'm not going to try ambushing it again. The snakes weren't that bad. Compared to the slimes, the snakes were nothing. Oh, I'm gonna have to... Ah, it's fine. Not gonna get the push, but that damage was good. Hell yeah. Okay. Quick walking stick. Okay, good. And we can still do a thing. 
Oh, see, there she rolls everything. I wonder when poison goes away. Hopefully soon. I might have to have my stable hand go back and rest. <laughs> oh, but we are about to level up. Like the whole the whole crew. Three to nine now. I don't know. We did some damage. Uh, well, this went better. Probably because I wasn't trying to use weak AoEs. Well, that's not really much of a concern. Okay. This has been a long road, but now they have gained a level. Hopefully it'll clear the status effects, too. It doesn't look like it did. Let's see. Evasion and fire immunity. Oh. I think we're just going to take it. And we also get a chest. Oh, I should probably have the herbalist do that if we've got curse immunity. Uh, let's see. Replenish focus. And we have a goblin helm. And a smoke bomb. Oh. oh, wait, those are based on the stats. I didn't even notice that. Well. So we are still poisoned. Much to my chagrin. I think I'm just going to move over here. Oh. We have a sanctum. Protect a character from death, but are destroyed in the process. They also give bonus stats. Evasion. I do actually like the idea of getting evasion on my stable hands. Okay, blacksmith never rolls well. Okay, I think we want to head back over here. We also have a house of ritual. Yeah, do we fight the crow? Do we fight the garter snake? Actually, I'm just going to go investigate the mystery. Quiet Glade. Got it. Plus one max focus. That's kind of awesome. Let's see. Let's end turn. Oh, the garter snake left. Okay. Decent chance for plus one max focus as well. That's pretty dang solid. And we can fight the rat. No, we can't fight the rat. Yes. Become devoted. Gain ambush immunity. So we could go after the crow. Go up here to the rat. Oh, let's let's go up here to the rat. We won't have the blacksmith. We have an alluring pool, which I think is fast travel. Yeah, this should be fine. Fight these two. Possibly consider replacing this, or like getting gear, and then going on an adventure. And we're not poisoned anymore, but it doesn't matter. Strong rat hurt. Okay, we have row attack, but no. I love the idea of a scholar with a. No, let's let's go for interrupts. Wouldn't matter.
It's fine. There is literally no way we can miss at this point, right? <laughs> oh, freaking course. Eight damage, too. I, oh, we are just having a doozy of a day. I should have used that one focus. Don't roll the dice like a goof. Well, at least we have a lot of money. We probably do want to start heading for objectives, though. I just, we had such a rough start with that slime, losing all that health. Okay, so what do we want to do? Do we want to take this guy over here? We got camps, we've got a lot of things. We've got the guardhouse, but we can't do that. Oh, oh, Pram's over here. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna take him down. We'll have the, uh, stable hands do a teleport. If we can. Oh, ambush. Fight crow. Well, I have no choice. Unfortunately, this is like my least defended guy. I think I know what to do. There we go. Freaking... Weirdly still having a hard time here. <laughs> I mean, that is kind of how this game works. Uh, you're having a hard time until you're not having a hard time, and then it's kind of cakewalk, and then it gets really hard again, and you're just like, oh no. What have I done? Alright. So let's go to Ashhaven. We can't do any more quests, which, I don't know, I still wish you could pick up more. Uh, so we could buy a bunch of God's Beard if we wanted to, but I think... Interrupt push versus cutting... <sighs> Interrupt and push is good. But the accuracy is bad. We have the Book of Ice, which would be an upgrade. And some new things. Oh, right. Sell the Fire Ring, Strength Ring, Awareness Ring. Smoke Bomb I should give to my... one of my other characters. Okay. So I've got a hundred gold. We could buy the Queen's Thug Armor. Actually, no, it's not really that good. It just gives some extra HP regen. So, the main question is, do we want to pick up the Queen's Sword? The six-foot pole has not been working for me. Do we want the Book of Ice? Yeah, I think we do. And then we want every bit of God's Beard that we can buy. This is moonshine. Nah. Okay. Don't care about services. Use a teleport scroll. Oh, wow. That's really good. And we have a monument. So that gives us EXP and lets us restore focus. So I think I'm going to have us fight the pickpocket, and we're going to have at least one character burn all of their stuff. Oh, before we do, though, give to the herbalist. Because their int is pretty good. Yeah. Let's try ambushing them. There we go. Because I can actually use points on that. Alright. So what do we have? Cutting slice. Oh, that damage is good. Thing is, I want to kill the pickpocket first. You. Goofing me. There. Can't steal from me, jerk. Nice, clean five damage to everybody. Alright. And then all things considered, I think I'm just gonna have the blacksmith taunt. So I don't know how much damage the bandit archers do, but... Oof. 
slightly what I was trying to avoid, but that's fine. Okay, so we have... Okay, so this does a bit of splash, whereas this does hits everybody. I think we're just going to go for the splash. Bang! That do be some damage. Finish off the periphery. Let's see, we could go for the row attack. I didn't even have to use all of my focus here. This is a much easier group. Like, no notes. That was great. Hobgoblin armor. Armor resistance, magic damage, bleeding immunity. Putting that on her. And in case these are cursed. Get the gold. Queen's Thug Helm. I kind of already have one. I don't want to get rid of the merchant's hat. That armor is good, though. Nah. And a vest. Armor, resistance, and strength. And bleed immunity. Put on that. Old shovel. Big damage, but you have to roll a lot more. And it's a two-hander. And it's fragile, so we're just going to take it for selling. Witch robe. Resistance, focus, intelligence, and curse immunity. I guess I'll put it on the Scholar, actually. Okay. Do we want a Stone Hero? Sure. Gain some focus. Gain a bunch of EXP. Go back a little bit. Good enough. Okay, so our scholars... Okay, we don't have much time. She says that, but I'm not actually sure about that. Uh, let's see, do we want to fight the young witch? Looks like it'll be a solo fight. I mean, we pretty much want to fight... ...everything we can with as many characters as we can. Now, if I remember right... Oh, she's immune to freeze, so it doesn't matter. Oh, uh, we're gonna move? I'll actually use one, because I can probably just knock her out in one go. Perfect. Just share the gold. None of these, none of these characters benefit from it. I would love to see them actually nuke the load times if they could. Oh, we can just go to Pran. Praise the sleeping gods, there you are. All this sneaking around is stuffing me heart. Under orders of Queen Rosamond, the Queen's Guard have been arresting anyone who run afoul of her. Most aren't seen again. A young lass by the name of Grizel has been captured and is being held to the guardhouse. She's a good girl and has become something of a hero to the resistance. Poor thing is scheduled for execution. We stand a chance of stopping this tyranny. We must free her. We'll need to raid the guardhouse. Our best bet is to cause a ruckus in town, forcing the Queen's Guard to react. They'll be running around and leave the guardhouse unguarded. An old-fashioned brawl in the local tavern always gets the guard's attention. Omis knows I've seen my share of those. Oh, and I happen to know the guards are expecting a supply ship at Tinderton, Port, uh, Tinderton Pier today. I'm sure they'd be mad to see the ship in flames. Okay, we also have a quest board. So, gold, gold, or... Deliver a sealed letter to Stone Hero in the Autumn Forest to get a Cloak of Purity, Armor Resistance Evasion, Poison, uh, HP Regen, Poison Curse Immunity, or Shocked Handbow. Uh, which is Shock Arrow, Shock Recoil. Damage, Shock... I mean, that's good. That's really good. The thing is, both of the items are probably not nearly as good here. Kill the boner in the autumn forest, kill the imp. I think we just go for the kill, get the gold. Because this cloak is good, but not amazing. And this crossbow is great, but I don't have a character that really uses those. That's a big boner. Okay, so what else can we do? Markets. Yeah, we can't afford much. 
Uh, let's see, Blood Ring, Attack Damage, HP Regen, Riding Sword, Book of Warding, Push Group, Cleansing Storm. Uh, let's see, Party Heal and Support Range. Poison Bolt, which is kind of good. I don't think we need it, though. No, so apart from loading up on God's Beard, there's not really much of a reason to go shopping here. And my blacksmith is fine. Doesn't need anything. Okay. Well, shall we fight the rat? This is my herbalist, right? Yeah. I wonder why it's... Oh, yeah, this is my herbalist. Let's see, I could try and ambush the rat. Yeah, because my herbalist is actually pretty good at ambushing. Ice. Ice blast! Dang. Would have been nice to just get a free kill like that, but it's fine. No, it's not. I mean, it just bounces off the blacksmith. My blacksmith is a tanky fellow. Which is nice. There we go. Okay, I'll just share the gold between them. I think it's worth going for the camps over the individual monsters. Because uh, the camps, I think, are the ones that always have the treasure chest. Move there. And then we're, we're just going to wait. But there was a camp up there, but alas. I think I'm going to have the scholar go here and actually rest at the inn. Because the inn is dirt cheap. And that solves their... Uh, constant health issues. Oh, my stable hand's level 2. I missed that. Okay. Uh, so actually, with this... Give this to the Scholar. Oh. Give both of those to the Scholar. All of them to the Scholar. Okay, there we go. And just end turn. Actually, in retrospect, should have given it all to the Blacksmith. This is the Blacksmith's turn. And we want him to sell everything. Okay, mark it. Yeah, the shovel, the shovel will break, which makes it not that helpful. The book is useless, and the helmet isn't that amazing. We're just going to buy as much God's Beard as I can get my hands on. Yo, I want to buy the healing pipe. Kind of, yeah. I wonder if I can actually... Yeah, because what else would I get? The Riding Sword ain't that good. Yeah, I don't think most of these are amazing. Another Tinder Pouch actually wouldn't be terrible. I'm going to try buy and equip. Ah. I'm going to give that to the Scholar. There we go. All right, anything else? No. And we've got three movement, which should let me involve everybody in fighting the big boner. Fight. And this will give me a ton of gold that I functionally have no use for. Woo! He's a chunky fellow. Also cannot be bled. Well, I might as well go for the armor pierce. Oops. Is there a... 
I don't know if there's a way to undo that. Oh, wait, no. Just shifting, uh... I don't know what that is. It's bubbly, which makes me worried. Oh, the boner is just... It's a 2x2 two two creature. That's a big chunker. And it's immune to dodge. Okay, so I'm gonna move here just to see what happens. Seemingly nothing. Ah, we are wet. Oh, but you know what he's not immune to? You can freeze the boner. Or you can try. They knew what they were doing when they named that creature. But honestly, I can't blame them. I absolutely would too. <laughs> All right. Well, that worked out great. Honestly, yeah, I, I think this is solid. I'll have to look at why this has mixed reviews. I think it's mostly just performance related. Uh, okay, so not available for Mac. That's not really much of an issue. Bugs, unresponsiveness, and the countdown. But the countdown's kind of always been in the game. It used to be chaos, which would just get worse. Now there's just kind of a, a speed mode. Uh, and also, admittedly, because once you finish your advent adventure, there's not really much of a reason to explore. Uh, let's see, what else is there? No, it really just seems like this game needs maybe a little bit of, um, a little bit of a, a quality of life patch to fix up some of the different aspects of this. I would actually also say I would love a version that just gets rid of the time limit. Uh, let's see, can I actually sneak through? I definitely don't want to try and walk through the golem because that might mess me up. Uh, but yeah, just, just a little bit of a quality of life patch would probably go a very far way at improving this. From my perspective, I don't see any, like, major problems that would cause me to be like, no, this isn't worth picking up. Uh, let's see. Ooh, do we just fight the young witch just because? Oh, it's the worst that can happen. Uh, but really, I think the answer is, if you like For the King 1, you're going to like this one. This has a little bit more tactical depth. But it does also have, uh, well, it's kind of a different flavor, but it does have more tactical depth, which is something that I personally appreciate. I love the fact that your positioning on the board matters, as opposed to just, you know, just being a, a lineup. Uh, just because it makes the combat slightly more interesting in terms of positioning and targeting, and uh, you can push enemies around, so I kept trying to do it, but if you knock a melee enemy into the background, or, like, back a row, it actually has to move upwards to be able to attack, which is really useful. Oh, did the big big guy go away? Might have. He did. We could go here and just fight the guy. But I think I'm just going to head up this direction so we can maybe do the tavern brawl. I don't know. For now, though, I think it's a good stopping point. So, For the King 2 is available on Steam now. It's, once again, if you like the first one, you'll probably like this one. You might want to wait a little bit. Oh, yeah, here we go. So, uh, they even have a roadmap. So, quarter one, or no, December, is a quality of life update. So, that'll probably fix bugs and performance. Then they're going to do another quality of life update in quarter one of 2024. And then an infinite dungeon mode, plus bards, in quarter two. And then in early 2025 is when they're planning on having their first free and paid DLC. I'm curious about how they're going to handle that, but honestly, I don't know. If, I, I don't mind games that are functionally complete having paid DLC to extend them, uh, especially if it's something as kind of niche and interesting as For the King, uh, because this is the kind of game that you're meant to play over and over again in different configurations uh, with different classes. And here, uh, let's actually save and quit out to the menu, because one thing I haven't showed off yet is the meta progression. It's called the lore store. So there are different characters that you can unlock. So there's five starting classes, uh, the ones you saw plus the hunter. And then there's also, what is this? Six more that I haven't unlocked yet. There's also new things that you can start off with. Uh, so maybe extra lockpick options, tinder pouches, 
uh, bags of gold, vision scrolls, and all sorts of other things. Uh, starting traits as well, which oh, I didn't have any of these. In the uh, the beta period that we played, uh, there were a bunch of traits available to every character, but now there were none. So I actually have to unlock them first. Ooh. Uh, let's see, different items, different locations to be found and interacted with. Uh, so these will actually show up on future runs in the map. Uh, cosmetics, so if you want to get different backpacks and hats and stuff. And then there's also mercenaries, which are characters that you can hire at towns that will stick with you for a little while. Uh, they're kind of expensive, though, and I don't really feel like using them. But I do think it's an interesting way of kind of giving this game a lot of extra replayability, especially with the campaign mode where you are... Uh, yeah, you have actually five different chapters to go through. I was kind of hoping there would be like a, a really large longer chapter, but maybe it's one of those that when you start on chapter five, you'll have like a lot more depth to it. Uh, but maybe this is a good kind of response to how absurdly long and large For the King 1 was, that it did start feeling a little hard to traverse the map. And so may by making it a little bit more of a linear adventure, uh, you don't just get lost in the sauce just wandering around on a boat for a while. Or even the airship. I'd forgotten about that part because we were pretty much done with the game by the time we had the airship. Anyway, uh, I guess with all that said, if you guys like this video in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like. Helps more than you know. And if you want to see more rad new games every single day, then hit subscribe because I got tons to check out and show off. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.